Hey everybody, welcome to Class A, learning support resource for industrial design uh, Class A surfaces. Um, my name is Adam, and today's Class A is about geometric continuity, what that means to you as a surfacer, and why it matters. Continuity is something you'll encounter a lot as a Class A surfacer. You'll find it affects uh, the aesthetics of a surface, your ability to build geometry from geometry, uh, as well as the weight and complexity of your models. Um, in this case, we'll be talking about G0, G1, G2, G3, and G4 continuity types uh, and exploring what they mean at a very basic level. Uh, this will be a high-level overview, and I'll try to avoid math as much as possible, but I'd like to just throw it in there uh, just for those of you that are interested. I think it's interesting. Um, I know that it helps me to understand the difference between these things. If you don't care about math, I'm not going to get deep into it though. I'm just going to mention kind of the basic overview. Um, so that brings me to G. You've heard me mention already G0, G1, and you've probably seen it all over ClassASurfacing.com. Um, this stands for geometric continuity, and so for example G0 would stand for geometric continuity degree 0. Uh, you can also see similar notation on uh, other sites where they'll use C instead of G. I've even seen other letters used. Um, they're basically equivalent. Um, the notation C has a slightly different meaning from that of G uh, mathematically, but really the difference is uh, only something that programmers and mathematicians care about. So you can use C if you want. I'm going to continue to use the term G just because it's more commonly used in the industry. Um, so that brings me to this illustration. Look at curves L and M. They don't touch at point P. This is not G0. This is G nothing. There is no continuity between these two curves. None. Move on. Continuity starts at G0. G0 is uh, referred to as point continuity usually, and that means that the two curves or surfaces in question touch. So uh, mathematically, all that means is that if you have uh, a graph of two different curves in space, and you solve them for the same x and y, or, or same x or y, then you'll get the same answer. So the solution to the equation is the same for a given point. Um, Curve L, in this case, is said to have G0 continuity with curve M because they touch. Good. Easy enough. G1 takes that one step further. So with G1 continuity, the curves not only touch, but they go in the same direction at the point where they touch. We usually call that tangency. In calculus, this would mean that the first derivative of the two curves is equal at the point where they touch. Hence the name G1, as in G first degree equivalents. Um, curve L, in this case, is said to have G1 continuity with curve M, but that, that's pretty obvious, right? These points are tangent, but they're not really tangent, they're actually collinear. Um, if we look at this next slide, things get more interesting. All of these curves are tangent at the point where they meet. Um, what they do after point P is irrelevant, so long as the direction is the same at that point. So um, as you can see in curve C, for instance, the, the curve can go off in a different direction if it wants to, as long as at point P it's going the same direction as L. G2 continuity just builds on this concept by adding one more requirement. Not only do they have to go the same direction, but they also have to have the same radius where they meet. In calculus, this just means that both the first derivative and the second derivative of the two equations are equal at that point. So, um, basically, curves C and R, in this case, uh, we're going to say are, are uh, curvature continuous, G2 continuous, because they share not only curve A's direction, but its radius at point P. So the radius can change afterwards, as in example C, um, but at point P, the radii are equal. So G3 continuity takes that even one step further. Um, it adds this idea of planar acceleration. Um, basically, this just means that uh, the G3 
G3 continuous curves touch, go the same direction, they have the same radius, and that radius is accelerating at the same rate at a certain point. Uh, you calculus heads have already got this thing figured out. G3 continuous curves uh, have equal third derivatives as well as second and first derivatives. Um, so here you can see that curve R shares not only the same radius at point P as uh, curve A, but it's accelerating at the same rate. And so curve C has the same condition at point P, but then gradually tapers off in another direction, and that doesn't matter. Both curves are said to be G3 continuous with curve A because at that point P, the radius is the same and they're accelerating at the same rate. Um, G4 is really seldom used, but it can be important in certain isolated cases. Um, G4 continuous curves have all the same requirements as G3 curves, but their curvature uh, acceleration is equal in three dimensions. Uh, and, you know, you get the idea in calculus, the fourth derivative is equal. So here I'm showing a curve in three-dimensional space, a spiral, and as you can see the blue curve continues the spiral perfectly. Um, that's just to say that the uh, 3D acceleration of the parent curve is uh, continued. So this means that the curve will continue to travel at the same rate of change in 3D space.